So this was a 28 year old female who was in an MVA as a passenger. And she came into our trauma bay. She had a few other abdominal injuries. Um, the big thing that you notice first is she has all this contrast in her bladder. So it makes visualization of her pelvis somewhat difficult. But as you look, you can see both the side joints look okay. You can see that she has a dysmorphic sacrum. It's kind of interesting. And then if you look at her left anterior ring, you can see that there's no actual diastasis, but she definitely has some uh, superior rami fractures here. So after her CT was done, you, she actually had this non-displaced sacral fracture on the left and pretty significant sacral dysmorphism. If you actually look at her L5, it actually articulates with her ilium, which is kind of interesting. And then here in the front, once again, it doesn't look too bad. So the question is, is this stable? Is this not stable? So what I did was I had her go ahead and get up with therapy over a period of one to two days and we retook images. Eric, do you have a, uh, is an axial image through the sacrum? On her, we don't have a great axial image, but it's a pretty non-impressive sacral fracture there. Is it a complete? Is it a complete fracture? It's not complete. It's not complete? Okay. Yeah, it is incomplete. So once she actually got up with physical therapy, um, you can see on this left, she actually now has some diastasis, which wasn't visible on the other images. So her pain actually increased with getting her up with therapy, and now she has this left-sided diastasis. So she got um, two S1 screws and ended up doing very, very well with that. Her pain was gone almost immediately, postoperatively. Once again, looking at her preoperatively, you wouldn't necessarily think, based on these images, that there would be that degree of instability. You know, in, in, in training, it's funny because uh, one thing I always learned was when you look at CTs, or you look at um, x-rays, go back, I'm sorry, please go back. Yeah, no, to the contrast, yeah. One thing I always look at, if, if the bladder is filled with contrast, right, you kind of look at um, what we call like the displacement of the bladder. So on that inlet, on that pseudo inlet view, right over there on the right screen, you can see that the bladder has some, is being pushed over to the right side, right? It, it's, not, it's not a symmetrical fill. So that's always something that uh, I always look at to say, okay, well, then there's some hematoma or some 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 process going there. So that that alerts me to some um, injury or or you know that's something that's also that you should be uh, looking at. And it's more it's more pronounced on the CT scan too when you go go through CTs and you'll see that bladder shift. And those are some things that you always need to be aware of when you're looking at uh, X-rays or or CT scans. And so. Uh, did you make her uh, weight bearing as tolerated? I didn't. Uh, I, I, I still kept her to a touch on the left. On the left. What about initially though? So it was and initially it was just toe touch. No, initially she was weight bearing as tolerated. Okay. 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 And and she was was she getting up with CT at all or no? She did. She actually stood up. And she's pretty young. She stood up and walked around, but her pain was significantly worse once she started ambulating. And then after you, and then after you fixed her, and then after I fixed her, she had no pain whatsoever. Hmm. Awesome. Pain was a one out of ten. Excellent. So I think it's another thing, kind of in the literature, is that pain in the sacral area is kind of becoming more of an indication. Mm -hmm. I've had these fractures that can go either way of just going ahead and pulling the trigger for screws. Yeah. Nice. Chuck, anything to okay. add? I, I mean, I think what's interesting is you take that same x-ray, right? And it's a, this is a high energy patient, young, and you know, your index of suspicion is, is, is much higher, right? Um, you know, you change that story and it's a 70 something year old from a ground level fall. And suddenly it becomes probably much more innocuous. Of course, you also probably don't end up with x-rays with the bladder full of contrast and things like that because there's no reason to do that in that scenario but um, i think that that's what's interesting contrast in that i think sometimes it can also be kind of hard to evaluate some of these injuries when they have such dysmorphism 
you know, the L5 and both the sacrum too. It can make it more challenging and it can obviously make your screw placement significantly more challenging. Luckily for her, she didn't have a significant difference with that. And I didn't have any issues putting that screw in. But I've seen it where some, some tickle dysmorphism can really change your plan of where you're going to put your screws. Was I muted the whole time and you guys couldn't hear me? No, we, we got you. We can hear. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Nice. Okay. Second patient's a 19-year-old female. That is post Let me interrupt you for a second. So the, the only comments that I would also add is that a lot of that is, is not necessarily that that has to have a screw. A lot of that that you're demonstrating that the, uh, that these cases are absolute judgment calls, right? And then you described one of the methods of doing that, which is uh, progressive activity, um, you know, sharing with the patient risk benefits and alternatives, <clears throat> and then giving them um, some sort of say in that. And, you know, that's a one where it, it looks very good for the patient because she sees a significant response and improvement. Um, but, you know, un unfortunately, without that uh, sacral CT, it's hard to, you know, give, you know, full on constructive feedback as to, you know, could have been known, you know, is that one where the exam, is that one for an exam under anesthesia, you know, the progressive activity, is that one for uh, exam under anesthesia, is that one that um, some people would say you're way over aggressive, some people might argue and say, hey, you're not aggressive enough, that one was uh, almost doesn't even need that because on this cut you can, you know, on these few cuts you can see this indication for why, or maybe, you know, some people have a large amount of knowledge related to sacral uh, uh, dysmorphism that, you know, certain types might be more prone to certain things. I don't, I don't have that knowledge, but um, I think those are the things that it highlights. It highlights, don't put in the screw in every one of these, their judgment calls, you need to kind of factor all those things in. There was a, uh, a question um, in the chat asking about why not just make her <clears throat> if she's having some pain why not just make her toe touch and not even uh, uh, take her to the operating room let her heal non-op if uh, she was doing relatively initially okay before therapy and maybe not even stress it you know just let her in uh, toe touch and just let it heal it's something to definitely consider um, with her though based on the mechanism I was a little bit more concerned that I would be missing kind of subtle instability. Did you stress her in, in, in the OR then? If you missed and and what did you find? Um, for the most part, it didn't move a whole lot, but from her preoperative imaging to post ambulation imaging, she did have that left sided SI joint widening. So and it was Eric, about five have... millimeters of widening compared to the pre. -op. So I don't think that's a SI joint widening. In fact, I would suggest that there's zero SI joint widening because the SI joint is not injured. The sacrum is. And and maybe it's uh, sacroiliac injury. So it's sacral fracture with sacroiliac joint diastasis. But that one image there doesn't show any diastasis because it's asymmetric. You can't see the other SI joint. You you have a profile of this SI joint. You don't have a profile of the other, and that looks like a normal SI joint. Again, I, I don't know. I'm just critiquing for potential, right? It's not me with evaluating it. It's not me looking at it. So I can't I can't totally judge that. I'm just questioning. I can just tell you from, from me looking at the pre to the post, I, I did see a difference there and her, her pain continued to worsen. So we stressed her and so, we ended up closing that down a little bit and drop and her pain also went away. So um, Harmeeth and mm -hmm. Chuck and anyone else want to comment, if you do, if you do any stress views, mm -hmm. how much movement 
do you require or how do you judge the amount of instability that then needs a screw? Well, I think there's sort of two issues here, right? Like one is um, mechanical instability that you can somehow produce a dynamic uh, image of and demonstrate. Uh, but the other image, uh, the other factor, and I think is just as valid and, and real is just simply pain control and mobilization, right? Um, there are pelvic fractures that, um, and I will, and, and not just in the geriatric population where we more kind of classically think of this, but even in the younger population where I have taken people to the OR and, you know, pushed and pulled and not really been too impressed, but gone ahead and, you know, given them fixation and two, just improve pain control because in general, um, it does work, you know, it's reinforcing their, turn them into Wolverine in the pelvis does help them uh, in terms of how they feel. Um, so I think there's sort of, those are sort of two separate issues here. Um, in terms of what's enough, um, I think, again, the, the patient perception of how they're feeling and how they're mobilizing affects that. You know, if you take someone to the OR and they're not mobilizing, they're not, you know, you've tried and uh, you thought it was a stable pattern for, you know, you, you gave it when, you know, uh, scored it uh, one way or the other. And, you know, even if you don't see anything grossly, you know, you still have that sort of mental, I'm, I'm doing this to mobilize them. Um, and then if you see something, um, then you're like, aha, this is why, right? But is it, is it really why? So um, I don't know. I think there's sort of two issues. If I can see it move, that's un unstable for me if I'm taking the OR. I mean, that's sort of... I mean, I think the other point of reality is when you've taken that step and, uh, you know, you've, you're already in the OR and they're anesthetized, um, you know, as the uh, joke goes from Harold and Kumar, we've gone too far. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, so uh, it's kind of the reason why I asked uh, Eric, uh, you know, Dr. Bo initially was I asked if it was a complete fracture or not. So usually these non-complete um, sacral fractures um, they're usually not, uh, you know, unstable. Um, and I'm not as aggressive when it comes to these non-complete fractures, if it's definitely complete and in the setting of, so th it looks like she had on the x-rays, a left-sided non-complete sacral fracture, a right-sided paristymphocele fracture. Mm -hmm. I don't know if did the patient have a inferior rami fracture as well. Uh, no. Just right, superior, just kind of that person. Just right there. So, so, so in the global scheme of things, when 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 you look at this ring, um, my my radar really goes to occult instability or any instability when the patient needs to have, for the most part, a complete. It can be non-displaced, but it should have that complete sacral fracture, and this is a young patient. So the, the, young, the young sacrum is not going to fold in like, uh, like an 80-year-old sacrum, right? An 80-year-old sacrum, you can still have like an incomplete uh, sacral fracture, but if you stress them, they tend to mush in because the whole sacral ala is mushed usually. So they're the ones that have more of the occult instability. So an 80-year-old, I mean, so this patient is a young patient, uh, um, an incomplete sacral fracture on the left side has no anterior ring pathology. On the right side is only a, um, you know, an, a, a parasympathetic fracture, no inferior in my fracture. But we know from the literature that when you have even a non-displaced ipsilateral um, superior in my fractures, then instability goes up, I think about 30%, right? And then if you have bilateral, superior inferior my fractures then it goes up way more right so you know for me if i'm going to stress this it's got to move right a couple mil you know two or three that's not enough motion for me to stay i'm motion and i'm not talking about um i'm i'm, I'm not talking about um pain control at this point i'm just talking about motion so you know for me just 
pushing on the pelvis. You've been with me when I'm pushing. That we had that one case that anterior ring. That thing was moving, right? It has to it has to demonstrate, you know, movement like this in order for me to um, have to intervene. Um, so I, you know, a couple of millimeters here because I do think the pelvis, even still in the in the, in the SI joint, you, you push hard enough, yeah, you might get something. Right, but it doesn't mean it's going to be unstable. Now, the other question is obviously this whole, you know, pain control issue. It, what what do we for, for 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 pain control? Is it really do we got to put a screw in? Do we not? Do we let them work? That's still super controversial. I know, you know, Shock Trauma has published a big series on, you know, um, you know, these screw fixations don't increase or don't help pain control. I know a lot of anecdotal studies. This is your study, obviously, right here, but a lot of anecdotal stories of where this does work. So it is still, I don't think we don't, I don't think we do have a great answer for this. I think it's uh, like Jeff said, it's a judgment call, but if you're going to stress something, it, it definitely has to move enough to be like, wow, but a couple of millimeters here and there. And in, in the setting of this, uh, this is something that I, I don't think had um, an instability itself. You know, I think I, her pain could have been multifactorial. Yeah. It could have been from, from that fracture. And now that you stabilized that fracture and she's feeling better, it's a whole lot of um, that that goes into it. That's why I think this is still very controversial, um, you know, topic. I don't think we have right answers for this, and I think what you did for her and it helped her is probably the, still the right way to go. But in terms of the mechanical aspects of this, I don't think this was an unstable pattern. In in uh, in the hopes of not dragging this out, if you guys want to do another case, but the mm -hmm. added question that I would ask is. Um, do you, um, how, how does this factor into now a 20 something year old female for future hardware removal, um, versus even why, when you might put that in? Cause I think I have a gender bias that if somebody is still of childbearing years, then I am less inclined to stabilize that with hardware. Even, or if I do, I am going to probably plan on removing it. Any thoughts from anyone on that, or is that not an issue to anyone else? No, I mean, I think it's an issue, but at the same time, um, you know, it's hard to know how much it's just the fact that they've had a pelvic fracture versus, you know, the presence of our metal. Our presence of our metal obviously puts this big x ray, you know, warning sign or whatever. And I think I would agree with you that I have kind of, um, I kind of probably take it, take my posterior hard route more routinely <clears throat> on quote childbearing um age women um that being said um i'm also and this is definitely controversial a uh, much more liberal fuser of si joints in the acute setting um so you can't really go backwards after you do that um so mm -hmm. um i don't know my answer is i'm not completely sure I think it's still controversial too, as you know, if the patient needs it, they need it. And that's how I view it. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly need it, but it might on a borderline case dissuade right. me. Yeah. Right. All right, cool.